Hello, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. If you caught episode 87, then you know who this guy is to my right. But if not, then this is our creative director, Miguel, and he has been our saving grace throughout this year. Yes. Uh, and if you did listen to that episode 87, if you didn't, then go listen to it. It's a great, great episode where you learn all about Miguel uh, and his life. And we ended things off at 2020 and where our relationship picked up from there. So we're going to be talking about from 20. 2020 to 2022, and then mostly spending our time on what 2022 has been for the three of us, because it's been quite the wild ride of everything that we've done this year. Um, so 2020, Alex actually reached out to Miguel, and we started working with him. So what did that all entail? Well, we had just gotten hit with COVID, I believe, um, that had just started, and we had just got the initial, maybe, I don't even know if we had the home gym stuff yet. No, because we did it. Because we were doing it at other gyms first. Mm -hmm. And so I'd reached out to Miguel. Um, We hadn't worked together at all prior to that. No. No? Okay. Um, And I don't even know necessarily. I I was familiar with Miguel, but it was more so through like friends. Um, And so we had the opportunity to work together the first time. I remember how much I prepped for that first (laughs) time to shoot. And I prepped for like multiple days. I practiced. Now, you guys shoot with me every single week. How often do I practice now? (laughs) Zero. I was so so nervous, but I also wanted to maximize our time because I think that that first session was only like two hours. Mm -hmm. And we got like six or seven videos that day. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was, uh, I I don't even really remember like how it started necessarily. I'm not exactly sure how everything started, but I do remember sitting at that meeting at Quills and going through like what our plan was, what our goal was and what we were hoping to be able to do. And then we did have our first filming at KHG and that was something that was a huge learning experience, at least for myself of knowing how long it took (laughs) for like setup up and truly getting the lighting right and really being able to get in there and like roll because I was thinking, oh, we get in here, turn the camera on and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not really how it went. The movement of light was probably the most challenging part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like we had so many exercises planned and Miguel has all this lighting to get us set up. And I'm just like, all right, we're going to shoot this one here. And we're going to move to the other side of the gym and do this one and then keep bouncing back and forth. And he's like, how about we pick a spot? <laughs> we, <laughs> we shoot as many as we possibly exercises. can right here and then pick another spot and kind of go from there. So it has been a massive learning experience since Miguel's joined us and all that. Uh, yeah. And that was just the beginning. Yeah. So that was our first filming. And then we did start to get some stuff at the home gym. But we also, if you guys have kept up with our YouTube channel, you'll see that there's some videos at, um, there was that one, was it that Glassworks gym? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then there's <laughs> some videos at Bellarmine um, and then some in our home gym at our old house. So we bounced around quite a bit, just really trying to do what we could because we didn't have a ton of equipment at the house. We really only had barbells and dumbbells to start off before we started to get more and more of the pieces. And so we were just bouncing where we could, um, trying to film where we could, filming after hours and paying for those spaces and just really working around whatever we could at that point. Was that the first project for you that was like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. As far as like educational videos where we're, we're batching them all. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was definitely first. And I remember, uh, the first session, you know, Katie Hearn, Jim, like you said, we, you guys had a bunch of videos planned a lot, (laughs) and it was, um, Super thankful for Nick Brazley. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Nick Brazley. Shout out. First shout out of the episode <laughs> uh, for helping out with the entire thing because as you see, it's like with, I think with a lot of creators, you're a one man band. You're mm-hmm. doing a lot from filming to lighting to like trying to direct and help to, you know, to editing everything that's involved with it. And to having, to have a helping hand is, was huge. And he helped mm-hmm. a, a ton with, um, the Glassworks gym, like mm-hmm. you guys said, just helping out with the the initial just 2020 year for all of us. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that was my first experience. And it was just in a learning process ever since. I mean, we've gotten, I mean, in my opinion, so, so much, much better, better. So, much better. Yeah. so much better overall. But uh, there was definitely just like putting, you know, just putting in that, putting in the reps, putting in the hours to like understand uh, the process and for all of us to get better and just to work, work better as a team. So it's been, yeah. It's been a crazy journey. 
I don't even remember how frequently we uploaded in 2020. I think just once a once a week, maybe, or once every two weeks, because we only shot every, I think we shot twice a month. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we try to batch it all that way, which is so wild to, because we'll get into how much we shoot now. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> very different. <laughs> very different. Um, but at that time, we would batch quite a bit and kind of just take the whole day and shoot type situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and do we want to just jump to the end of 2020? Sure. Okay. So then at the end of of 2020, Miguel gets a great opportunity to take another job Mm -hmm. and it takes him down to Austin, Texas. And um, at the time when he brought it to us, it was a situation where I was, I was sad for like selfishly. Same. (laughs) (laughs) I was, I was sad selfishly, but excited for, for you just because I knew it was a cool opportunity, something you were looking forward to. Um, and I knew that we couldn't match the salary that you were being provided at that time. Um, but that day, the last day that you came and and shot, um, I had already put in my phone, uh, Miguel, and then in parentheses, PD creative, uh, <laughs> PD creative director that day. And at the, I mean, it was like January, 2021 type situation, I think. And, uh, I knew at that point and I had put it, it, it like put it in my mind that he was going to come back in in some form or, or capacity. I don't know how quickly. Um, but I had said to him in kind of a, just passing that be ready to hear from us in a year. Mm-hmm. And, um, that year passed, he took the other job opportunity and it so happened, you know, God willing type situation that uh, it lined up for us to be able to reach out and um, be able to bring that to fruition and bring you back here, which yeah. is so cool. So freaking So exciting. grateful, yeah. <laughs> Master manifest. <laughs> <laughs> I like vividly remember that last day we filmed like the curtsy lunch because you got that tutu to wear yeah. <laughs> in 2020. I think it was in November because I think it was around your it may Someone's have been. birthday was going on. It was chilly outside because I remember loading everything back in, in your car or Nick's car or whatever yeah. and like being like, man, this is it's getting a little nipply out here. Yeah. It's nice to see you guys. I'm not <laughs> happy you're leaving, but I got to go inside. It's, <laughs> it's cold. Uh, so. Yeah. And I just remember you being s- not afraid to tell us, but you were just yeah. like, yeah. this is something where I don't want to disappoint you or I don't want to leave this situation, but this is a really exciting opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I remember at that time that I was just like, well, I didn't know you you wanted a full-time job. Yeah. Like yeah. I, th- because every part that I've known of you is you've just dipped your hands in so many different buckets and you had always been a freelancer. And so I was like, oh, he probably just doesn't want to be tied down. And you also were were really involved within music, as we talked about in that last episode. And so I didn't want you to feel like pressured into working to fitness just because we had a good relationship and you'd be like, well, I'll say yes, even though it's not what I really want to do. And so I was really happy that you got that job because it really did light a fire under us of like, oh crap, he does want to do this. Like, let's make it happen. Um, And I'm just so thankful that we were able to have conversations with you. I was like, if you don't mind, like, can you share what your salary is? Because we need a goal to be able to work towards and to be able to talk about what this looks like if in a year you're in a spot that you do want to leave that position. Yeah. Oh man, I do remember uh, approaching you guys with that conversation. It was honestly... I mean, I mean, I think it's just apprehension and a little bit of, you know, just mixed emotions because um, we had worked so well together. I loved our year together. We mm-hmm. had accomplished so much. It was so much fun. Like I always used to tell you guys, I'd leave those sessions. My cheeks would hurt <laughs> from like laughing so We'd much. You know? <laughs> well, so, also, we had no social interaction because it was like third 2020. So when we saw right. each other, we're like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, yeah, I mean. I think it was just uh, a moment in time where I, I, I've always tried to just take the risk, even if it scares me, for doing this creative stuff. Like, I know that this is the route that I'm going and this is what I want to do. Let's see where it leads me. Mm-hmm. And I'm always just like keeping those opportunities kind of at bay. And like for that one, it was I needed to obviously talk to you guys and see what things look like. And and I mean, gosh, you already know, super <laughs> grateful, super <laughs> grateful to come back and to be in Columbus, Ohio, to be close to my family, to still be involved in the things that I'm involved in outside of PD. Mm-hmm. You know, this has been, it's been amazing, but I had, like, I think you had mentioned it, like, I had to go do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just had to do it. And it very, very, for me, very fulfilling in so many different as- aspects of my life because one, I got to live somewhere else for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like, 
uh, amazing opportunity, great experiences along the way. And now I'm here even better than before right. to work with you guys. Yeah. 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 And it was quite the uh, craze getting you started here. Um, <laughs> uh, I remember, like, I was stalking your Instagram that year. <laughs> TBH. Uh, just to see how happy you were. <laughs> and I remember, like, you were posting stuff. I was like, dang, he's definitely not coming back. Like, he is so happy and he's just doing his thing. And I, like, had a self-conversation. I was like, Sue, like, if this is what he is supposed to be doing, like, yeah. you can't can't be upset like <laughs> you said you wanted his happiness you can't come back and be like since Fast. it's not what i want yeah. then i really don't want your happiness <laughs> although there was a part of me that definitely did not want your happiness if it wasn't here That's terrible. Oh, just a small part you know i'm being honest i was being very selfish yeah, understand. uh and i remember that we like reached out and i was like hey any chance you're still interested and uh I forget all the details, but we had like a call that night and Alex and I were so nervous. We were sitting at the yeah, kitchen table and we're like, what are you going to say? No, what are you going to say? <laughs> what, are, what are we going to do here? Too much. And we're like on the call on the speaker and we're like, hey, like we'd like to be able to offer you a position like if your contract is almost up. And then we ended up getting a call back from you and you're like, I can actually start sooner. I'm driving to Columbus like right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh shit. Okay, let's, well, let's go. go. It all let's happened go. pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I mean, I've joked around about it at this point, but it was de like, it was a silver lining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, PD, silver lining. and. Yeah, of course. I was stoked. <laughs> I was stoked. Like then as soon I mean, I'm I'm the type of person like once it's once it's decided, once it's already like rattling around in my head, like just gotta go for it. There's no like I don't want FOMO, just like no regrets, just this is the next chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was something where we knew we needed to take the next step in being more on social in general. And we were like, there was no other option than having you here because it was something where it's like, we have to be extremely comfortable with them in our home all the time. Um, you know, not all the time, but quite a bit. <laughs> we'll um, talk about all the time a little bit. <laughs> comfortable around the dogs and just like flexible. Like mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing because our schedule is so wild and it can change in so many paces. And like Miguel covers all those things like times a hundred. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, there's no, there's not an other option. It's like, this is the option. And if we can't have this now or have him now, it was like, we'll just wait until we can and kind of make do with what we got. And so it was really awesome to be able to that first call, make that happen. Um, and then Miguel drove up <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> just, was <Yeah>. here. <laughs> just was here the next day basically 20 hours like through the night 20 hours straight from texas and, like fasted and had like fasted. two hours of sleep like he was talking to us like the night before and he was like yeah i'm probably gonna leave at like 8 p.m and i was like i think it's like a 20 hour drive <laughs> and you're like yeah i haven't eaten all day um i fasted i'm just gonna keep fasting Big i was fasting, like you're yeah. literally <laughs> insane <laughs> you're gonna i have to like oh find you want to find my friends make sure you don't crash in the <laughs> i know we kept the checking night. on him yeah <laughs> yeah at that point in my life i was really into fasting i like, really into it like once a week full day fast i don't do any well like once a Sometimes. month now yeah. Yeah, yeah once a month for me now but uh yeah i mean honestly the fast helped me like get through it because if i would have eaten and then i would have gotten tired you guys already know so i was <laughs> through the night <laughs> didn't eat for i think by the end of it it was like two and a half almost three days and i stopped somewhere outside of nashville at a man what's that what's the uh the old timey breakfast spot like, cracker barrel yeah had a, had a oh, i do remember that now <laughs> i do remember that now <laughs> had a celebratory cracker barrel meal <laughs> so yeah so just commemorate the whole thing but uh it was actually a beautiful drive too because once i hit nashville outside of like knoxville nashville area it was still like frosted in winter mm -hmm. So like I want like you know six in the morning the sun starts coming up and there were just like deer all along the road and it was everything was just like an iced tundra. I remember for some reason that that drive that moment I was like damn this is beautiful. <laughs> That's why like I'm heading to Columbus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to Columbus. Okay. <laughs>
Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Well, that was in March that ended up starting. I always have to ask Miguel, because yeah. in my mind, I'm like, January. It yeah. just started at <laughs> right the beginning. But yeah. really, but it was just It was March. in March. And it was like March 7th, I think, that like you either accepted the job or we decided like we're moving forward with this. And then like we first started recording on March 15th. I went yeah, back and checked. <laughs> um, we started recording on March 15th. And honestly, some of those videos, because I was like, what videos did we start with? But yeah. it was the dumbbell lateral raise one. And I really like that one. And um, the RDL, the RDL, the bent knee RDL video. And, and then maybe the, the glute meat kickback. Yep. That yeah. was it. And I was like, that was a really great filming day because yeah. I was expecting to be a little bit embarrassed by whatever we filmed that day. <laughs> but we honestly killed it yeah. and got everything figured out. And like throughout this whole process, Miguel is actually our first employee. And so we had to figure out all like the real ass full time employee, <laughs> yeah, not just a contracted worker, 1099, like employee benefits, health care, like unemployment, the all the whole thing. And w getting that all set up was <laughs> something that none of us were expected yeah. for um, or had any idea what to do. And just so thankful for Miguel being patient through it all because we're like, here's this job offer. We're going to pay you this and get you benefits. But um, just give us a second while we get things figured out. And he was so patient with us and we got things figured out as fast as we could. So don't worry. He got, he got paid. We're all settled. Uh, he has health insurance. We're good to go. Uh, so it was um, an adventure getting all of that settled while also still having an adventure because we had talked about starting either in March or April and like we said, he was like, I'm driving up tonight. I'm ready to go. And Miguel actually ended up Loki living with us for a month. Not, I mean, he lived with us for a month. <laughs> well, I say I say Loki because like you still went home on the weekends yeah. to like see your family. So yeah. it's just like yeah, you were, but you weren't at the same time. Yeah, um, it's because all his stuff was still in storage or oh in the U-Haul slash. Let's not even get into the U-Haul. Oh U -Haul my gosh, mess. I forgot about. Yeah. I forgot about the storage thing. The U-Haul thing. I think I'm still burned. <laughs> Every time yeah. I pass there, a U-Haul. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We're anti you all here. Yeah. We are not a shout out for them whatsoever. Yeah. I... Uh, but that was quite something of going from hey, let's go ahead and get this new position started. And then, okay, we're actually going to all three live together <laughs> while we get this figured out and understand what this whole process looks like. Yeah, it was a, it was a transition. We flipped all of our worlds upside down and kind of just figured it out. And I wouldn't want to figure it out with two other people. Like it's yeah. the perfect group <laughs> of people to figure this out because I feel like uh, there would have been a lot more disgruntlement and arguments if it wasn't the three of us. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was good to go with such a, I wouldn't, not necessarily adversity, but change. We started with so much change that all the stuff that's happened throughout this year has kind of been like easier because mm -hmm. we started with the the level of change and having to work together right from the beginning. And so um, that was a, 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 ch a shift that I wasn't anticipating necessarily, but I'm grateful for in hindsight that, that we went through. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Thank you guys for like, <laughs> letting me live with you for a little bit, <laughs> taking care of me, feeding me, all those like little things, you know, they, they don't go unappreciated. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was crazy because I was, we, I would come up for the week and stay like four days and drive back to Louisville. And in between that, my stuff was in storage. I still had like an apartment full of things trying to find a place. Like it was, it was a little crazy. It was a little crazy, <laughs> crazy for a little, a little bit. bit. But, a little uh, bit. So yeah, I mean, patience all around from everybody. Yeah, you know, for we sure. had to like make sure, like, you know, it's a. I, I think I told you guys this when I first got here. It was like I know that this role needs to be very adaptable, flexible in that in that regard because like some of the stuff. I mean, like with when it comes to ed editing videos, it's like these. It's just this is just how it is. Sometimes you have to stay up late. Sometimes the schedules change. Life happens. So you just. I understood that I had to be a flexible puzzle piece in this whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, you guys like you guys have helped me along literally every step of the way to get here. So like any good person would want to do the same for you guys. Right. You know, it's just 
it's kind of common sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're extremely appreciative of you. Just we that was also a sign of just like your work ethic as a whole, which we've learned over our time together of just how well we all mesh when it comes to that and that we're all on the same like path and we have the same vision. Um, but with you being like, yeah, I'm driving up. I'm ready to work the whole week. Um, yeah. But then I'm also going to like drive home, but then come back and work again. Ready to work on Monday. Uh, ready to work on Monday. <laughs> I was like, again, don't understand how you're doing this, but like, I guess let's go. Like, I felt awful that whole first month just because I was like, it oh was my so gosh, much. he doesn't have any place to go <laughs> and he's just working so much. But I always touched base with you and you reassured me. You're like, no, I'm good to go. And I was like, okay, like, just want to make sure yeah. you're not like overextending yourself right now because uh, there is so many there are so many moving parts but I do feel like that first month really set us up like exactly like you said Alex for so much success because we really had to get good at communication fast like we had to get good at like boundaries communication and how we spoke with one another to be able to succeed this year uh, but also to make sure that like our relationship, working relationship and friend relationship was able to be nurtured and there not to be misunderstandings or frustrations from just not having a conversation about something. Um, and I think that that's really helped me overall within like communication in general of I felt like I've improved so much with Alex over the past few years and throwing someone else into the space even more so helped me. And I feel like it's helped me within all of our staff with PD of being able to realize like, hey, oftentimes it's just having another conversation or making sure that you're on the same page or updating someone about your timeline. And that's like profusely helped me that you have been so understanding, that you have been so flexible because and then been willing to communicate and willing to talk uh, because it's just allowed us to get our work done and also keep like a good relationship again, like outside of work. Like we have our work side of us but then we also have it intertwined of like a whole friendship intertwined with that as well. And it can be hard to work with friends um, or significant others or anything. And so I think that, I mean, I'll pat us all on the back here. <laughs> I think we've done an incredible job this year. <laughs> I will say that the friend aspect for Miguel and I is that um, when we both, it's getting later into the afternoon, <laughs> it's, <laughs> we eat a late lunch, four o'clock, <laughs> five o'clock. All of a sudden, we're both just sitting here at the kitchen table hour and a half talking about shoes, fashion, <laughs> music. And it's like, we should probably go back to work at some point today. <laughs> I know. I try to like not even stop to talk to Miguel sometimes. I'm like, and I've told you that I've like walked by and I'm like, I want to chat, but I know if I start talking, I'm literally yeah. not going to go back to work. So yeah. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do a lot more catching up with Alex than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes, man. I mean, sometimes where you're just like, uh, like for our Monday morning meetings, right? It's always just like, even after Thanksgiving, like I haven't caught you guys up on my Thanksgiving exactly. weekend. It's just like, we we had our meeting, we had to get to work. Like those conversations take time. You don't want to rush things. You want to be like just transparent. So a lot of times I just like, it's, you know, it's weird to work, you know, yeah. let's go. That's just what it is. Um, but even in the space, right? I think there was a podcast that one of you guys had linked me about, um, like even like the Hormozies, right? They have these camera crews and you're like, you're with, you're filming people in their home or significant others. It's like a whole dynamic and relationship. That's like something new for me. So even though we've had experience in the past, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a, this is a different league right oh, yeah. now. So it was like, I knew that communication and transparency, just honesty and accountability, all those things that I legit asked for at the beginning of this year. And you guys have committed and like given me tenfold, just like love, in your own unique ways throughout this entire year. And I think that's just shown, because I know, <laughs> I remember Sue was like, you need to do a better job at communicating, like use emojis <laughs> or something else, because it's like that. so- I forgot about that. That's so funny. <laughs> he was sending these messages like, that were like, periods and like cryptic, <laughs> and we're like, do you hate us? Like, we were so bad at the beginning, because probably business-wise, we did complete the opposite of what anyone would say if we played our hands of saying like, we have no other option. You're our only option. And um, also, like, we feel like you don't like us because you're not using emojis. <laughs> and we're just like, here's our full hand. Like, please come work with us. Uh, I don't know. Which I'm sure someone looking back would be like, probably not the best way to play it. But it worked out for us personally. Yeah, I would say the thing that uh, 
really I improved the most on was just being able to give feedback Mm -hmm. because I had not been able to give good feedback to um, the staff as a whole or even like between you and I. We struggled with giving feedback as well. And uh, having Miguel here changed that entirely. Like it, it gave me a new perspective because it was the first time we've had someone in person working with us every day. Mm -hmm. Whereas all the other opportunities from a feedback perspective were all online, Mm -hmm. which I think add a level of complexity that's just very difficult to understand emotion and understand, um, you know, where you're coming from and it can be misinterpreted easily. Whereas in person, it was just an opportunity of like, yo, this is what it is. And it's always been well-received too. Mm -hmm. Like it's never been received with emotion or or frustration or what have you. It's been always about just getting better collectively. Mm -hmm. And so that was such a positive reinforcement for me because if you if you would have received it differently it would have been like I would have taken 10 steps even further back mm-hmm. from the place that I was already not in a good spot of giving and so you allowed for me to like catapult myself which was tremendously yeah. helpful and it's funny cuz even um you just started working with my sister on um her business, the Cheesecake Girl, shout out. Shout um, out Cheesecake and, <laughs> and she said, I was like, oh, how was shooting with Miguel? And she was like, it was great. He was so like detail oriented, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, one of the first things he said to me was like, I accept feedback really well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I second that big time. And I literally said to her, it's been a huge part of my growth of like his ability to accept feedback, like exactly what you said. Because I remember at the beginning, I was just like, well, I like Miguel and I know he worked hard on this because you don't give less than your best. But there were like small changes and I felt like, oh, this is just being a little nitpicky. Like this was a good video. We're good to go. And then it became like very clear to me after it was like, okay, two videos in a row or two things you've shown me in a row where there's just like one thing slightly off. Off, mm-hmm. I was like, I remember thinking like, how can he know that that's the thing that's off if I never tell him that's the mm-hmm. thing that's off? And I just remember being like, hey, can we like maybe possibly like if it's not too much trouble, like <laughs> change this thing? Um, and I even sent you like one time and I felt so bad of like time sta- stamps, like picking apart a video mm-hmm. of like what needs to be pulled out or what I want put in or what needs to change. And I'm so glad that I did that because Alex and I were just talking the other day of from the beginning of the year to now, like how much our videos have improved. Yep. And like, it's just like, Yes, we've improved within how we speak and how concise we can be and how we present information, but I wasn't even talking about that part of improvement. It's just like the videos themselves and like the work that you're putting in is so clearly evident and so, so much improved as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all around, all around. I think I'll start with the feedback because it's such a, it's important. You're, you were in a, sub- a subjective field where you guys consume content just like everybody else like i see it it's such an easy thing to like make a mistake just like the other day i I kicked myself in the ass for this but i posted that i made that (laughs) real with a thumbnail it's like i i just overlooked the fact that i used the wrong thumbnail yeah Mm -hmm. i work on this stuff so much that sometimes you just simply overlook it yeah Mm -hmm. so even having like even having feedback in that regard where it's like you'll use the wrong one or i don't like this or change the text like I, I can get it to where I can get the vision to where it needs to be. Anything else, if you stare at something for so long, sometimes you just get kind of fatigued. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So having having feedback, having references, you guys are killer with that. Sue with her Pinterest boards, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the inspiration, everything. Like you guys are always sending like, I like this video. I like this style. I like what she's saying. I like the way it's laid out. And it's just like, it's just getting me into the groove of like finding out where you know, where we can take this and what you guys like. Cause there's things I don't consume. You know, I have my, like my, my set content that I enjoy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but sometimes you need f- something fresh to really liven things up or somebody mm-hmm. different, a different perspective. So that's been, yeah, huge feedback communication. And you have to be, you have to receive it well. You can't take, if you're, I mean, I'm just speaking from a creative at this point, you can't take this stuff personal. Mm-hmm. Like just because you made it, you can't like attach everything to it and marry this one thing because it's going to change. Like people see it differently. Mm-hmm. That's just, I mean, it's quite period just what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've done this for so long now where it's like if somebody doesn't like something or if I don't, I mean, heck, I could like f- watch a video a year later because I've done that with our videos. Mm-hmm. Like there's definitely some that I'm just like, 
no, nah, this ain't it. Yeah, this is <laughs> exactly. not the we way. We need to redo this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what was the second point? Because I feel like I just went back. <laughs> back. <laughs> what was the second point? I'm not point? sure. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> know. But right. we can get back to the timeline. So Miguel lived with us for a month, mm -hmm. got, his, got his spot. And then from that, that month, we got into a what we still follow from a scheduled perspective mm -hmm. now into December of we, uh, we have our meeting on, on Monday from a creative standpoint to understand where we're going to be for the week. And then uh, Miguel's here working at the office. And it's a good time for us, especially as of late, to brainstorm. Because mm -hmm. I think that that's the one thing that at the beginning we didn't have so much of. And now I feel like we have such a better collective thought towards everything and we're working together so much better. Um, but that's how our Mondays go Tuesday is a filming day. This is We're shooting today, the podcast, as we always do, and then we shoot later into the afternoon uh, for YouTube videos and those different things. We come back on Thursday. We do the same thing. <laughs> shoot all day. So really, man. like, th uh, Miguel's here for sure three days a week, yep. sometimes four if we've got some other things going on, but um, that's been the schedule that has worked so nicely for us, and I will say that I was nervous to have someone else in our home every single week um, to now be in a place where Miguel is here at least the three days. And I feel tremendously comfortable as a whole, mm -hmm. um, as well as there are times where I don't even notice that you come in. Mm. Like Miguel, or I get sad when he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, I wish Miguel was here. Like on, on Sunday, I was like, damn, I wish Miguel was here. Um, it's uh, it's one of those things that I didn't know how that would work if we mm -hmm. were like if we were just going to be in each other's way. And Miguel came in with such an emphasis of just like, you don't even have to know that I'm here. I'm just going to pop in, do my job, and and you know, be where I need to be when I need to be there. Um, that was such a help, and and it allowed for me to feel such a level of comfort and allow for things to flow so much nicer and all those things. So I'm, I'm grateful that we found the routine and the schedule mm -hmm. from the jump really yeah. um, and have just been able to strengthen that as the year has gone on. Yeah. It's taken us some time to like really oh, fine tune yeah. it and to really make sure that again, like communication is in the best spot and we've implemented some different things. So as a company, we use Slack, which is extremely helpful and beneficial. And we have different channels that like the our podcast producer is on with Miguel as well as the um, person who's helping with our Instagram and so that they're all able to be cohesive. And then we also use Asana so we can put, okay, these are all the upcoming podcasts. This is when they're getting posted. Here's all the upcoming YouTube videos. So everyone knows what's going on. And we didn't start with that. And we had to get to that point of realizing like, hey, there's a gap in communication of not everyone is getting filled in. Let's have a central location for all of this information. And that's helped so much. And then within the planning meetings, as well as just the flow of how we've done Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've been able to just, again, like keep up communication of if a schedule is shifting of like, hey, I'm going to be a little bit late because this appointment, we need to shift things a little bit. And I can see like week by week and month by month how we've all improved within like how soon we're able to tell, tell someone something. So in the beginning, it might have been like, oh, um, yeah, by the way, I'm leaving early today. And it's like, right as we're in the middle of filming hmm. versus like now it's like, hey, we might need to shift filming because this is happening and we'll get this done and here's exactly what we're going to be getting done. Yep. So I feel like we have a much firmer structure, but we started with it and I'm so glad of how we've been able to, instead of being like, well, we started with this and we should just like cement ourselves to this. It's that we have been flexible with that same schedule, but also improved on that schedule and really found out, okay, how do we need to be communicating or how do we need to be giving feedback? When do things need to be done and time to review them or to look over them? Um, or even just telling, like, sometimes he'll drop a video and he'll be like, hey, this one's ready to go. And I'll make sure instead of just being in my head of thinking like, oh, I'll review it later and let him know, it's I'm typing it out like, great, thanks so much for getting this to me. I'll be reviewing it by tomorrow and I'll get you any feedback that you need. Or just being like, already watched it. This is great. Put it up. We're good to go. Um, so I think that it's been so great of all of us and we've all had the goal of working together. And like that's been the goal at the end of the day of like the mission of the company, but also just we know at the end of the day, we're all trying to work together. And our goal is to accomplish the same thing. And that's been so, so helpful to all be on the same page. Yeah. Slack has been, I mean, crucial. Super helpful. Crucial. Super clutch. It's it. <laughs> and we've, uh, 
I know I've improved, but I think, yeah, like you said, collectively, we've all gotten a lot better at just like updates, little things, fitness schedule. Cause like you guys with filming, that's just like a portion of the day. You guys are still <laughs> like, like running. This much, <laughs> even though it's this much of the schedule, it's about this much of the day. Yeah. You're still like running a company. You're, do you're maintaining a company. You're doing what you have to do to grow the company and work on the company. And, you know, filming and, and YouTube is just a piece of that whole pie. So our communication, Alex has been killing it on Slack lately, bro. He's like <laughs> communicating and like yeah. sending response. Like it's been, yeah. <laughs> no, he, uh, I think he started off, he was a little, like like he's mentioned you earlier. You can let him know. He was <laughs> yeah. not good. He wasn't <laughs> as... I'm not. I was, I was very reluctant to do anything. Um, me changing my norm is very difficult. I'm not a fan of doing new stuff. I like to do things how I like to do them. Um, and so adding Slack in or really even answering text messages is not my forte. <laughs> much better at it now. Overall. Much better. Just I've gotten much so better. much better at it. And uh, I would say that it is in, in part to both of you. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. And then, I mean, overall too, I think, flowers need to be held for sue because asana and monday just like the overall communication like your fr your front uh, the front runner mm -hmm. of this whole operation and to even have like asana built out or monday built out which we're using before asana built out to where it's like we know week to week month to month what's going what's getting posted what i need to work on you know i've gotten better at just like writing out my tasks my weekly tasks what i've done this week little things right it's just like being accountable mm -hmm. and having something to show like this is what was accomplished if i don't get something done I usually vocalize that and yeah like i said it's just a quick slack message but communication has been so crucial and it's so simple mm -hmm. like it's, it's such so a simple, simple thing you know because like we live in this fast-paced whole field and you just build narratives in your head or you're just kind mm -hmm. of like writing things and like you don't see things the way somebody else is seeing so just writing out and just letting it be known so expectations are managed i think sue is the queen of <laughs> managing expectations yeah so well, thank you. you. I'll take that compliment. Um, mm -hmm. David, can you clip that for me? No. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I appreciate it. It's something where, honestly, organization was not my strong suit. And I realized it was not really anyone's strong <laughs> suit. I was like, well, someone needs to do this or we are all just going to sink right this second. Um, so it was one of those things of like, I was born out of necessity, but I'm very glad that it's now looked like I am the queen of that. I very much so appreciate it. And just again, like your guys's ability to work towards the same goal and like David as well, who is our podcast producer, who we've mentioned him. Shout out. Shout out, David. Uh, we mentioned him uh, more on Miguel's episode as well. But like his ability to just be seamlessly integrated within our system of, okay, I'm going to check that and I'm going to get it done. I'm going to tell you when it's done and we're going to be on the same page. Or I'm going to slack you an update of, hey, this is going to be an audio only because the video was broken up. And it's just always making sure that we're on the same page. And I think that being able to be so like the more you communicate, the better you get at communicating. Yeah. But also like Alex had once made a comment of he said that he feels like I give too much leeway or I give more grace to like you two than I give to anyone else. Mm. And I vocalize, I was like, it's not necessarily that I give more just flat out to you, or I just let you get by with more, but it's because you've done such a good job of communicating with me, I know what's going on. Mm. And so I always tell people, and I tell people on our staff, like, I don't know what I don't know. And the door is always open to have a conversation about what's going on. But if you choose to not tell me what's going on, you cannot expect me to be a mind reader. Yep. And it really struck a chord where one day, I think something had happened, maybe Alex wasn't having the best day, and I just popped and, and I was like, hey, everything should be fine. But just in case something's a little bit off, like Alex ha isn't having the best day. And I remember later on, you uh, were like, that was really helpful because nothing really was off. But if I mm -hmm. was starting to interpret anything off, I was able to realize like, hey, he's just not having the best day. We're all going to be patient with one another and kind of like pick our battles, but like push through this and do what needs to be done. Yep. Yep. I think that we've talked about this, but grace being earned is yeah, like yeah. one of our biggest things of, of 
individuals wanting to have grace or, or patience provided for them, but they haven't necessarily earned it from the party that they're wanting it from. And between the three of us, it's something where the amount of grace that has been earned is, is so high that the amount of patience that's given is, is through the roof. And so, uh, especially as the year has progressed, my ability to express like how I'm feeling and what I'm going through at the moment has helped tremendously. And I think all three of us as well have, have done a better job of that as we've just gotten closer from a, a friend perspective, but also from a work standpoint and those things. Um, so I think that just continuing to build and the desire to be better on a day-to-day -day basis amongst all of us and, and having the same goal within the company and, and wanting the best for all of us um, is the, the root of it. And then we're able to just to build off of that love and care and, and grace um, to build what we desire to build. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. So with our crazy shooting schedule, this has also required Miguel to be on his toes. Um, and so he has, again, been incredible with that, of setting up things where we need it. And again, understanding our schedule is pretty crazy. And so um, I do feel bad if I don't help like set up and break down everything. But again, Miguel assures me. It's Sue does okay. better than that than I do. Miguel will second that for sure. <laughs> Alex is already out the door. <laughs> Every time we shoot in the garage, I'm like, I got to get the hell out of here. I got to eat. I'm hungry. And I'm like, I took three things. Things. I'm so sorry. I have to, I'm running late to a meeting, but I'll come back and help later. Um, but like, even with that of being like, okay, we're planning on shooting at this time. Miguel isn't, oh, I'm going to start setting up at that yeah. time. He's being pro proactive. He's getting things set up and making sure, and again, communication of saying like, we're shooting in this place. So this is where things need to be adjusted to has been so extremely helpful. But um, with all of the, the long days and the, the crazy schedules, there have been quite a few bloopers that we've been able to, to pull this from my it. Favorite. Uh, but <laughs> those shooting days, like you guys don't see a lot of the behind the scenes, um, but not all of the videos of what comes to fruition and is shown on YouTube is really how the whole filming day goes. Um, and Miguel has saved quite a few of our videos <laughs> where we were like, this one is trash. This is hot garbage and no one is going to watch it. And then he sends it and Alex will say, it's my best video yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have had videos this year that I've shot in one take that are great. I've shot videos this year that I've taken two hours to film a five minute video. <laughs> And somehow Miguel has saved those and also made them great. <laughs> and so um, it is one of the more fascinating things to watch of just the saving of the uh, the videos as a whole. I think another thing that we've learned so tremendously was just how um, much storage we needed for all oh, yeah. of the... Uh, or what even storage was. Yeah. <laughs> so when Miguel got here, we just thought that we would have cameras and batteries for said cameras, memory cards for said cameras, and we would just upload it all to Google Drive. And then we were all just gonna be able to disperse it evenly that way. And Miguel's like, no, 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 we need, and he gives us this list of all these things of like, no, 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 this is the best way for us to go about this. And it was it was a learning experience for sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, the bloopers, I'll go back to the bloopers. The bloopers are generally, so I, you probably hear me in the office like laughing. I, <laughs> and I love it. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> it is honestly like, uh, that's one of my favorite parts of like editing videos is kind of just reliving it. Yeah. And then putting a spin on it and just like adding the humor and the sauce and everything. And the bloopers are honestly like, they're so much fun to work on because it's just so much fun. And like, it's just nice to like, from the sentimental side, just like give you guys like stuff right. to laugh at, you know, it's just like, because we're generally just having fun doing what we're doing. Right. Um, yeah, so storage, <laughs> storage in like this whole process, right? I don't, I guess I can get into the nitty gritty since it's kind of like a creative topic. So like even now we have four cameras here and an hour long podcast, give or take, is probably gonna be like a hundred gigs from in the format that we're recording. So by the end of it all, and we have to keep in mind that David, our podcast editor, is going to be piecing us all together and we have to get it to the point where it's easy to digest, to upload, and then for him to download without sacrificing quality. So there's like a happy middle ground. So by the end of this process, like, you know, that we have to have 400 gigs, 500 gigs per day 
you know, that fills up a, a two terabyte car, a two terabyte SD card in like a few days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of just like part of my job too is just managing the redundancies, it, it, file management, organization, getting things uploaded, mitigating some of the work. Um, so there's a lot more than just even filming and editing and shooting and all that stuff. It's a really just like keeping it all in front of me and evening out the piles. Okay, it's like this person gets this, this person gets this. So it's it's really like it's a it's like a juggling act, but at mm-hmm. the same time, you there are just so many different hats I have to wear in this whole field, and a lot of it is just I I'm, I'm, go back to Asana. You know, it's just like writing it all out, mm-hmm. making sure I don't miss anything. If I do, don't be too hard on myself for it. Let you guys know, because um, I mean, just generally, just stuff happens. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes when the camera craps out or whatever happens. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, it's just well, like some we of we didn't even know it was a hat he needed to own, <laughs> let alone yeah. to wear. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, quite, we we're just so thankful that he had that skill set uh, because otherwise we would literally not have any of our footage um, or what to do with it. How many terabytes of data have we collected over the last 10 months? Oh, wow. Nine or 10 um, months? Probably, I would say a little over 10. Jeez. Yeah, and right now, I think once this quarters kind of wrapped up the next thing would be to back it up on another five terabytes so we, we just have copies of things just mm-hmm. in case but yeah i think we're probably right around 10 that's somewhere wild. around there so i mean <laughs> so that's much. like it yeah is. i mean it, i mean everything's organized by month and everything's broken down by video and topics so yeah by the end of it all i mean it's it's an hour it's hours of just like i said file management mm-hmm. dumping the footage encoding the footage organizing it getting it to where it needs to go um i don't even know what he means when he says coding the footage but i'm just like okay yeah, sure just, yeah just go not. for it <laughs> so if you are if so, if somebody's listening to this and you're in like in a position where you're going to be uh you know filming podcasts or long sit down format content and you have someone remote like we do to edit it uh you can't just upload hundreds of gigs of footage because it's going to take hours i think even with your all's fast ass internet it was going to take like 14 hours or something yeah. crazy so I have to encode it, which is just uh, making it a more digestible file size uh, without sacrificing quality. So there is a there is a middle ground there. I use Adobe Media Encoder, throw it in there and get it down to a digestible file size to get it uploaded. So I know you think now we're in the process of after all this is said and done, you know, David's getting like 40 or 50 gigs versus several hundred. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot easier for him to edit to and everything. So it just makes our process Every, every every process is a little different, but makes our process a lot easier to get it uploaded, edited, and streamlined back. Because, you know, I think the the tricky part that we've been experiencing with this whole project is the remote aspect. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the I'm the guy in the field right now, but we also have people on the outskirts, remote workers that are that are working just as hard to get this mm-hmm. to make this whole thing happen. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, it's getting it to where it's like I said, just mitigating some work, communicating with with David and making sure that everything is like squared away. Mm -hmm. And I think that one thing, just kind of to circle back to one thing you said of saying that we all want to get better is that you haven't taken the mentality of like, these videos are just good enough. And even Mm. when there is a video where you feel like it's good enough, you're kind of like, should we even post this right now? (laughs) Even though like most people would look at it or watch it and be like, that's a good video. But all of us are in the thought process of how can we make these videos better? Because again, even those videos from the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, these are great videos. But we've continued to improve of the way that we shoot things, how we show it, even feedback from you guys that you leave on our videos of, okay, you want to see the clip of the exercise before the video starts. And you want to be able to see these different angles of it, like taking all of that into consideration as well as, I don't think it was ever something that we really sat down and said at first of, oh, we want native B-roll, but we kind of all got on the same page of, let's go ahead and make these videos better and put the B-roll in it and actually made it B-roll from us doing those things. Um, And so that's been really powerful and great just to be able to have someone who does want to improve instead of just, again, like, okay, clock in, clock out. I got the job done, but was it done in the way that's going to make it the best ever yeah. that it could be? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, you can't be in this position in this role and kind of have that mentality. Mm-hmm. You have to, you have to understand that this is, this year was just the foundation for us. 100%. Really. 
100 percent like yeah. we are we are just laying out the foundation it's like all these houses being built around here you know what i'm saying <laughs> we're about to start we're about to start putting in windows we're about to start decorating <laughs> but we're not getting garage doors so that's gonna wait no one's got garage doors <laughs> um but yeah yeah i mean that they uh, with b-roll and everything too that's just like we are now in this position where we are accumulating so much uh from the year and uh, i think our b-roll is going to improve i think our storytelling is going to improve and i i personally i'm just looking forward to like what's what's going to come next after right. this mm -hmm. year you know i think there's i mean it's just like sky's the limit there's so much like we can honestly do and i think um, the fact that you guys are equally as eager to grow mm -hmm. it because we've we've seen it we've seen it grow like it's just a snow. It's, Alex thought this whole thing was gonna blow up as soon as I walked <laughs> in the door. <laughs> I did, I did. Oh my god! It's a snowball effect, right? So like now the snowball's getting bigger. It's picking up some steam. Numbers are growing. Views, subscribers, everything's going up. Feedback. I love the fact that Brandon and Mackenzie were like, "Yo, this video is like it was legit." Like yeah. I watched whole, like I mean. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's what you do this for, right? <laughs> right. So, we're just getting better. Yeah. Like, foundation set. We know what we know that, you know, what it takes. Mm -hmm. Let's just turn it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All three of us have a, a driving force of just like quality over everything. And I think that that's something that we just continue to drive home. And as we get more repetitions, as the three of us get more repetitions, we just get more and more comfortable and get more aligned as a whole. Um, something that we've, this whole year has been is a massive transformation for all three of us as well as the business. And there's been a lot of adversity that has presented itself throughout this whole process. And the three of us have stayed very strong, you know, throughout this. And it would have been very easy for one of the three of us to kind of like tap out at points and be like, I'm so done. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you guys are wild. I'm out of here. Like type <laughs> situation. One of us could have said that at any point and have been like, that makes sense. Like, I get it. Like it's, it's, it is wild. Um, and, and, you know, speaking to that adversity, it's been something where Sue and I were in a position where we just worked with clients and we filmed twice a month, two years ago type situation. And then all of 2021, we were on our own, just coaching for the most part. And then this year we transitioned not only to have Miguel here full time, but also moving to a place where you're in a CEO, like real ass position that is no longer you just working with clients. You still have your your good base of clients, but now you are truly managing all the coaches as well as dealing with everything. Like Miguel <laughs> and I talk about this <laughs> frequently. I'm just like, um, I, I don't even know where to start in terms of the things that, that come to mind. Everything that the business needs is what you're handling on a day-to-day -day basis. And I do want to vocalize like how grateful Miguel and I are of that um, because I assure you, and, and I say this, uh, frequently as well is that if if the roles were reversed things would be moving a lot slower <laughs> there'd be so much more bitching i promise you i would be complaining a lot <laughs> to be doing the day-to-day -day tasks that you do on a regular basis and so um i just wanted to we can i mean dig into some of the adversity and the challenges of like hiring and having to fire and doing those things where it's like we came from a place where especially at the beginning of the year we wanted everyone to like us mm -hmm. we wanted to be in this situation where it was like i don't want anyone to think poorly of me ever and this in this year like we've had some situations that have people have left not thinking the best and that's been hard mm -hmm. that's been really hard and like the three of us have been there for each other the whole time mm -hmm. and that has been such a powerful thing for me personally i know for all of us um but has been a, a big part of the growth i don't like i said i don't know how much you want to dig into the adversity or what you know pieces we want to speak to um but it's a big part of this year yeah well thank you first of all um and i think that one thing i i do want to say is just that like through it, I've, I've loved having you as a partner and it's been absolutely incredible. And I say all the time, I couldn't or wouldn't or shouldn't do it without you. But it's been such a welcome to have a, another partner in it and especially in person because through all the adversity this year and how hard this year is and Miguel has seen like 
basically all sides of me that <laughs> I, <laughs> I wasn't not that I wasn't prepared for him to see, but it's just like you're you're in our space, like you're yeah. gonna see the sides, you're gonna see the days where I, I'm angry, and you don't mm. see it often, but these two have seen when I am fiery mad and I've got a vengeance. They love it, which is not great for me because then I'm like, oh, they like this. I should just keep this up. Um, But he's also seen me like break down and cry during filming or seen me like just a mess in my office or saying we're going to film and then being like, I I literally can't today, whether it's my schedule is too busy or I like mentally cannot put words together right now. Um, And he's been extremely supportive through it all, as well as through the adversity. It's been so nice to have someone else to talk to, even if we're both talking to you at the same time, not like I'm having, oh, all these separate conversations with Miguel, but it's just so nice because like you understand the company, you understand the business and it's been helpful to have someone working for the business to give their perspective. And you've been a sounding board for me as we're making decisions because I see it from an owner's perspective Mm. and you see it from an employee's perspective. And it's been extremely helpful to have the conversations that we had or see your viewpoint on things or even just have your assurance because I've talked about it before of I struggle with being a people pleaser. And like there were times this year where I doubted myself so much and felt that it was all my fault. And Miguel, like Alex, of course, was very encouraging and said all the right things. But as you know, sometimes you need to hear it from someone else as well. And so it's been so helpful as my growth in this position, just to have the support of you and to hear your perspective, because it's allowed me to push further the conversations or communications with other people on the staff and really opening that door to the types of conversations that we have and recognizing like you can let people in and you can also have a professional relationship with them um, and figuring out what that looks like, but also just, again, that security and what I'm doing, which has been so helpful because we both, and we've said it multiple times, like you're one of our favorite people and like to have someone that you put in such high regard, also put you in high regard is extremely helpful <laughs> as a whole. Just to be like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something right. Um, because we've talked about it before of like environment of like working from home can be awesome, but it can also be discouraging because oh, you're yeah. kind of like, I'm at home. I yeah. could just like chill and no one's going to notice. Uh, but it helps of having like Miguel in the space and Again, he is such a hard worker that I'm like, I can't ask him to work hard and then me just dilly dicking around. Like, I need to get up and put my head down. And, like, even there was a day last week, yeah, last week where I really don't know how we got filming done. Like, it was such an incredibly hard and emotional day. It was so freaking hard. And I came back from going and doing something and I had done my makeup and gotten all ready to film after, but I got home later in the day and I was like, there's no way that Alex and Miguel filmed. And like I pull in and sure enough, like all the lights are on in the gym and they're filming. And I was just like, oh my God, like I wouldn't have freaking filmed. I told them I would, but like (laughs) I was not in the space to do it. And if I walked in and you guys weren't already filming, like there's no way I would have filmed. But like I I parked my car and I walked into the gym and I filmed that evening. And it was part of like their showing up, even though it feels like the world is crashing down around me, I'm going to show up out of respect for them and respect for like what we're doing together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot to digest here. <laughs> the adversities, yeah. adversities this year have been, it's been crazy. Yeah. As as a, I feel like there's days where I'm like, I have to tell myself, you know, there's a, I have to put my, my friend outfit or my hat on and then my employee hat on, you know, and it's just like a lot of those are interchangeable in conversations. Um, but to see you guys manage everything as well as you have, even though some days I know it's a little more difficult. <laughs> um, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's just like, why wouldn't somebody want to work harder? Why wouldn't somebody want to show up for you guys and, and put in the extra work or like, you know, like, like I mentioned this before, but it's just, we, this, this whole field, like videos aren't going to edit themselves. These projects aren't going to edit themselves. Things got to get done. So like my schedule, you guys have given me so much grace with my schedule because I mean, you see how I operate. I'm, <laughs> 
<laughs> typically a late night owl, which I don't wake up on time a lot of times, like either feeling rested or even getting here on a consistent, like it's 9 a.m., but I still have like a 20, 30 minute grace period from you guys, mm -hmm. which I... I've expressed these to, to you before, <laughs> but I can't thank you enough for that because yeah. I've come from a place, corporate America and other previous jobs where it's just like, they, I mean, they hold you to that. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I get it from an employee standpoint, a business standpoint, totally respect it. But for me, like this, again, this is why I'm like, damn, this is so nice. Like this feels right for me because they're, they respect the fact that sometimes Miguel's up late working on videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he's just, it's just, that's my lifestyle. So first of all, thank you for that. <laughs> Adversities, like to see you guys tackle everything that you have and like get up the next day and continue to do it. Like that is, there's been, there's been moments where I'm like, like, I mean, I, I'm straight up as a friend, friend mode. I pray for you guys all the time. I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me. And now at this point to see I really would love to see us grow into this place where you guys can play more of the CEO role and not so much be in the trenches. Cause like a lot of this year it's just been like, you guys are in the trenches working on getting the stuff done, getting the business to grow, filming the content, managing everything, other relationships in your life. So I think this, this, this coming year is gonna be a lot of new CEO role and position mm -hmm. where you guys get a little more breathing room. You have more flexibility to really pour back into the company. And I think that's going to be, I mean, time will tell, but I think it's going to be, I mean, uh, the, uh, next year's going to be the, the biggest year for PD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. There's just yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. So there's, um, there's just, I mean, yeah, there's so much to look forward to. I really, I mean, judging from this year, also, this just came to mind. You guys, I've, I'm proud of you as friends, uh, uh, friend hat, not <laughs> friend. I'm, as a friend, I'm, I'm proud of you for, having those tough having those co tough conversations that shit's not easy yeah. you want people to like you blah 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 like i get it i'm gonna keep pt13 sometimes <laughs> sometimes you don't gotta be like that yeah. yeah sometimes you just like put your foot down have a conversation say it with your chest move on like respect is earned grace is earned mm -hmm. you guys have done a, a much better job i think next year is going to be even better for you guys mm -hmm. a new level of ceo and, and maturity that you you're going to you're going to accept and it's just part of being the boss it's, a, it's why you guys are in the position where you are it's mm -hmm. part of being the boss mm -hmm. so i'm i'm anxious for more <laughs> confrontation <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> like, let's that. see sue do it more <laughs> <laughs> no not in, a, not in a you know toxic or negative way right yeah. but just like that's that's healthy yeah i yeah. think that's healthy yeah being able to being able to handle that and i think the the growth aspect of not letting emotions come in the way because like we at the beginning it was very emotional like the the first kind of employee adversity that we experienced this year i mean that was a lot of emotion <laughs> Yeah. tears, anger, lots of things came from that, from all three of us, you know? Yeah. And, and as we've had more adversity as the year's gone on, as the year has gone on, how we are addressing those things is so much less emotional, mm -hmm. like not even on the same, uh, like there are even more difficult adversity, I would say, like the, the level of difficulty is higher, but the response is so much more like, okay, what is the plan moving forward? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason for us to get overly emotional right now. How can we, how can we move forward? What do we need to do next? And it's so much more strategic and mindful of everything rather than it being like, oh, woe is me, or this is, this sucks type situation. Like, mm -hmm. of course it's not, the best situation but we we have the tools to move forward and i think that that's been one of the biggest changes for sure yeah 100 percent. and one thing i will say funny about the the time thing so miguel is a night owl and we're morning people <laughs> yeah. and so our schedules it, are very different. it is funny kind of how our schedules but we figured out how to make it like all yeah. work together which is great because i love that you can keep your schedule that works for you and i can keep mine that works for me um, but there was one night that we got like a slack from Miguel at like 1 a.m. saying a video was uploaded. And then like the next morning. You act like that's only happened once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying a specific story.
storyline, okay? That has happened multiple times. But it was like a message at like 1 a.m. that a video got uploaded. And it was, I think it was a situation where like the video needed to go up the next day. And so he was like working into the to the night to get it done. And then it was very uncharacteristic that we hadn't heard from him that morning. <laughs> and like on, so the sa- on the same topic of grace being earned, neither of us were mad. No. We were both like worried. We were like, is Miguel okay? Like, should and I then- go over to his condo right now? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, have you heard from Miguel? I haven't heard from Miguel. Do you think he's okay? And I was like, yeah, I think he's okay. And then we both look at each other and we're like, he probably slept past his alarm because he was he was slacking us at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m., whatever time it was that the video was done. Yeah. Like, if we don't hear from him by this time, then we should probably, you know, send out a search party. But <laughs> before then, like, let's go ahead and figure it out. And you, like, woke up and you're like, I am so sorry. I should be there already. And I was like, bro, you're good. Like, we're not filming until later. Like, you needed to sleep. Like, get your stuff done. And I think that's just another, like, layer of our relationship relationship that has been so helpful of like, again, we understand each other and there is a lot of grace there because time and time again, we've shown like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to work hard. I'm, I'm going to just show up time yeah. and time again. And all three of us have done that in different ways and in the same ways. And so when something happens of like, if I drop the ball and I'm not ready to film or if something's not ready to go, I have gotten so much grace and understanding. And for each of us in different ways, because it's like 99% of the time you show up. And so like this time that you didn't, like there's no need to beat you down. It's just, that's what it is. We're moving on to the next scenario. Um, And that's been really helpful for me of not only like that grace given to me, but also just showing of, hey, keep working hard. And like when stuff comes up, people will understand instead of feeling like, I'm just kind of half ha- hazardly doing stuff and then people aren't understanding when things come up, which is a really frustrating place to be in of feeling like people aren't understanding what's going on. But I think that's a good time to reflect and say, have I even shown up or have I even communicated about what's going on to push that onto them um, where I could have been a better communicator in that place? So what was your favorite part of the the year? <laughs> favorite, favorite part of the year favorite memory or part um i would say that each month continues to be better as a whole uh it's wild because we look back on the year and we got started with um the videos but shortly after that we got into your prep mm-hmm. um so we had your contest prep and all the things that that entailed as a as a whole um shortly after that uh i get in my car accident Mm -hmm. and that it's wild because i forget that that was even like this year (laughs) Uh, i have that car accident i have the concussion all that fun stuff um and i don't know i mean it's just like one thing after the other but we just continue to like get up and Mm -hmm. so i think that i'm getting to the end of this year just really proud of us for what the year held um and just like excited for what this like the work that we were just in the trenches every day doing stuff on a lot of days where we did not want to necessarily be doing it um, to be able to move into the next year with this level of momentum and i think the level of creativity that we've tapped into is the most exciting part for me Um, and also the like going back to the feedback where i can give like real ass feedback now Uh, because at the beginning i would just be like i don't know it's just i don't like it yeah. and you'd be like what don't you like i just don't like it <laughs> something's <laughs> off something figure off. it out yeah. and now i'm able to actually like explain why i like something more or why i like something less and i think that that's again just continuing to help with our quality of video and we're just jiving so much more because it's becoming something where at the beginning miguel was trying to figure out what we wanted and now we're at a place like this is what all of us want. Like, this Mm -hmm. is our vibe. This is our sound. This is our visual, like what we want to do. And so I'm just, you know, I I get more and more excited every month type situation Mm -hmm. because I think we're just getting better. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one of the, I guess the most fun parts of this year has been like branching into the photo shoots that we've done. Oh yeah. Because they've just been such a different type of like content or creative aspect 
than we've really ever done before. And both of these guys were just like in for it when I suggested it of like, hey, here's my like mood slash vision board for this. You want to do a photo shoot? And at first, Alex was a little bit more like, <laughs> What am I even gonna do in this? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so out of my comfort zone. Very out <laughs> like, of his I love zone. I love it for Sue. I love pictures of Sue. She looks <laughs> she great. Does. She is a real ass model. I <laughs> I am like a block of cheese, and I don't necessarily oh my know <laughs> a block of cheese. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know if I should smile. I don't really have like um, I, I I'm getting to my more natural look without smiling type situation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been nice. That's happened over the last couple of photo shoots. And I've gotten significantly more comfortable. I would say the movie theater shoot was the mm -hmm. one where I was like, I actually am enjoying this type yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm like forcing myself to do this anymore. And so, yeah, that's a, a big growth part too. Yeah. So it's been just super fun because the first one we actually did like right in front of our house in the I whole- I was super- <laughs> Uncomfortable. He was yeah, not we also, happy about that we also had you trying like different poses and shit. Like it wasn't you were, <laughs> definitely out of your comfort We zone. almost were like, you can just like not be in these. Wow. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing ever. I've never had that flash go off. Sorry. Amber about alert that. or something? What was that? No, I don't even know. She has something on her watch. Um <laughs> Oh, I hit something on my, yes. whatever. Uh, regardless, it was literally right in front of our house. And the whole point was to use like the sky as the background. And I had sent like some screenshots of like inspiration for it. And then when we did the basketball shoot, that's when the Pinterest board started of like, here are 1700 pictures of the vibe that I'm going for right yeah. now. Let's get it done. And that shoot as well was something where you're like, well, what do I even bring? What should I wear? What are we doing? Like, you don't play basketball. And I was like, I understand all of these things, but I think it'd be really cute. Um, <laughs> and like, I, we got so many pictures from that and then the movie theater and all that. So it's been really fun to like have a different outlet because we all are such hard workers. We do all work crazy hours. Um, and so so being able to, even though we have fun, of course, with the YouTube videos and the podcast, like this was a different bucket to pour into a fun. And just the fact that you guys were like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, oh, sweet. And it's just been fun to like be creative in that way. Yeah. The photo shoots for me have been uh, just really enjoyable to get out, of the, get out of the house, get out of the office, get some sunlight, especially when the weather's been getting colder now. So getting some sun. Uh, and just like, yeah, just having having fun with you guys, doing something a little different that's outside of the the, the video. Because, I mean, it's work at the end of the day. Not every, you're not going to love every single project, every single video. Like, sometimes it really does feel like work. So just stepping out and doing something fun, a little more relaxed. And we've, like, I, I think every single one has gotten better with those, too. You know, mm -hmm. we're just like, we're having fun. And Alex's modeling has gotten <laughs> So, so much, much better. better. You know, Sue kills it every time. <laughs> Alex, is, he's getting Thank the you. reps in, so he's getting more comfortable. Uh, to go back, a favorite favorite part of the year. Um, I think I really enjoyed having Sydney mm -hmm. yeah, here. Yeah, that was, that so was fun. super fun. That was awesome. That she, was so fun. Sh shout out to Sydney. Shout out. She killed it, and that video turned out great. Um, I really, the 10K announcement mm -hmm. on YouTube, yeah, that, yeah. that was Sue's workout fun. video, that whole experience was a lot of fun. It was just like, a great milestone i think we were just like in that moment so that felt really you know that felt nice to mm -hmm. like reach that and like put together what i thought was a really dope video from yeah. the whole mm -hmm. process um i would say those two would more more than likely be like because we've done a lot i mean the, the thing so is about this this year has been jam-packed and it feels like we've done more than just one year's worth of stuff you know sue yeah. competed <laughs> Sue competed multiple times. Like that we've had, I don't know how many YouTube videos go up at this point. I mean, three videos a week since I'm not March. doing the math. Yeah, it's <laughs> just since been March, a lot. Whatever, that's a really lot. lot. Yeah. Plus yeah. all of the TikToks and yeah, Instagram TikToks, reels, all, short form all stuff. of that. Yeah, it's it's a lot. I mean, it's it's something that it's good because we're we're looking like I'm excited for it 
more often than not. Like there are definitely days where we go out there and it's a struggle, but like um, there are more days that I'm like excited to shoot. And I think I'm getting more and more excited because we're putting more thought into every video. And rather than it just being like, we're shooting this, this, and this today it being exercises. Now we're going with like more topic based things and putting more thought into the B roll and how the sequence of the video kind of lays out and working more cohesively as a team. And so that's the thing that I get the most excited about is just the um, aspect of progression. And uh, I feel like we're on a big, kind of like upswing right now. Yeah. And I get like excited for our Monday meetings because normally um, we not only like go over the schedule for the upcoming week and what's coming up and what to be aware of, but then we do spend that extra time either catching up on the, each other's weekends or being able to talk about like different things that we have consumed or different ideas for content, which I'm so glad. And I love that you mentioned that, that we all do consume different content um, outside of like some of the general content we do uh, consume. But then we've been able to like send like reels or TikToks or YouTube videos all to each other of like, I like this concept. Do you see where my brain's going with this? Or let's go ahead and do something like this, but let's put this spin on it. And it's just been really fun to like, sometimes you come to meetings. I'm like, oh, that was a great idea. And I get like super jazzed about it or it comes for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> it comes from you of like, what if we do this? And I'm like, yeah, that would be great. And it just feels really cool because we're kind of just all feeding off of each other. And again, we're all in the same headspace of where we want to go and what type of work we want to do, which is quality freaking work. Um, and we want to go to the freaking moon or on that private jet. Yeah, That's what we're going to do. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us and hearing us talk about what this year has been from well, 2020 to 2022. But since uh, March came around and Miguel came back into our lives and we do just need to give an extra shout out, not only for him being the absolute best, but for loving Gus and Tucker the absolute <laughs> most, because I really don't know how Gus and Tucker would have responded to someone else in our space that did not give them the love and attention that Miguel does, which is so appreciated. And again, like Miguel has helped with my sister. He has been in contact with my parents about helping with their work. He's so willing to help and he's so willing and like his want is to be able to make things better. So we appreciate you. You are one of our favorite people and we are so excited to take on this next year and this next adventure with you. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, watch either one. <laughs>